take the like their position five for example because when you have troll as your carry it pretty much unlocks five to be pretty much anything because how strong troll is as a laner you'd expect for example like oracle would be the play but again being banned out yep. abaddon being banned out as enablers so i think right now i would gravitate maybe towards like a tree or something again that can have strong lane dominance to potentially shut out this dude. I, I think Entrefurion's more likely. That, just, that just, is, oh yeah, true, yeah. Just because whenever I see OG play with something like Mag Troll, right? Like these heroes, it doesn't matter if the camp is one stack or seven, they're mm. gonna kill it. Yeah. Um, and I think that they're gonna push No Tell onto something that can have more of a. Well, yeah, I think it's just, I think Shadow Demon also is still underrated. All of his heroes right now just farewell, you know, the Grims, the Ench, the, the mm. Furions, trees, like. It's such an easy position when you have the mag troll. It's why it's such a strong combo, because in this position right now, they just pick any no-tail hero. Okay, they pick the Rubik that they can just technically flex now between no-tail plus one, and it's not like they're showing anything, really. I think you just give it to Soxa in this spot. Yeah. Especially because how good a game it is right now, seeing you yeah. know, big spells, big team fight. So, still looking to be a... A more so, so OG in the previous draft they had targeted Koikfa a little bit more. They had banned out the Storm Spirit in the first phase. This time it seems that if you want to shut down the heavy team fight superiority that Liquid had, then you may be better off targeting the more support oriented staff. So mm -hmm. they banned out the Phoenix, like you guys mentioned, the Tiny. Uh, do you Ooh, think, and now here. Team Liquid pick up a Sanking? Nice. Is Koikfa going to be gearing up towards another team fight? kind of lineup with Team Liquid because it looked I, really good in that game it, one. It, it's open. I think you just don't fear the storm because you have Mag Troll. Like, you're just going to eat him alive. Um, I like this SK uh, real quick because the Warlock synergy. You have issues with damage output as the game continues, but thanks to the Fatal Bonds, it means Epicenter can just straight up shred things. And you also lack that just point-and-click stun with a, with a Warlock. Yeah. So I expect this SK to be the four, though. Yeah. Because he's going to be the one to be active. He can mirror the Rubik's movements. Like, you can't really put this Doom into that 4 It's not a Tiger hero. So I think this is very much now but, double yeah. annoying offlane. But is it strong enough against a troll? Double melee? Yeah, we'll we'll see. And to your question, I, I think Koifa should stick to something more durable. Um, we haven't seen anybody playing Medusa, but I've always loved it against uh, the troll. And... It's a bit awkward against Rubik, but after the buffs, I just I saw it on the patch list. I'm thinking maybe it's viable. OD into Troll Mag ha, is fun quite fact. A lot of uh, pros have actually been playing the OD. A lot of these mid laners have at least three or four games on the OD in, in the bank within the last like two or three weeks. Mm -hmm. So it is a hero that is being shown some respect, but are we going to see it in a pro match yet? Yeah, I, I say it, and I almost uh, want to take it back because like, no, yeah. I've seen OG play this draft against OD, and I know yeah, like they just yeah. all in RPM after BKB. Yeah, it wouldn't be good in this game just because of the aggression from OG. Mm -hmm. I think against a slower paced team, you could argue it's good, yeah. but against this team, not this so is a, much. This is a sick undying game. I, I'm not sure I'm a believer in the hero. I believe when we were doing that divine of uh, the qualifiers, mm -hmm. we were memeing about it because it took eight days for undying to get a win. But guess what team got the win there? Five men. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Liquid also, I mean, they have, they have a soft spot for the hero as well. You su suggest, suggesting the OD as what? Straight up as a counter to the troll? Is it because of the banish? Is it because the I, int difference? I, I just like having a extra save mechanism against RP. And Jesus it's nice Lord to have me. one on a core. Uh, they just go straight for the void. There I mean, so much fight. So much like gusto just, in Liquid. And it's like... Kyle mentioned it in that first draft, and I said my fear to Liquid as a team was like their drafts are, are so not generic, but like you look at them and go, hmm, that's good, but where's the flair? And then I realized how well they play the laning phase, how well they play as a team, you can completely mitigate that point. And same again with this lineup, you go like, wow, look at the team fight, and then you fear how do they get to the point of being able to yeah. team fight? And it's I based on their natural ability just to play well together that pushes him it, through it's definitely harder in this game though uh, well, for I'm sure, dying yeah. as such an insane matchup in this top lane you know double melee double yeah. strength heroes. lanes aren't going as easy for liquid it, yeah it, it's a totally different scenario and undying also kind of denies the area control that liquid were having at the moment you know you consider trying to fight them at a choke point when there's an upheaval and a fatal and an sk and a potential chrono if the undying can get a high ground tombstone off you don't want to fight around that anymore as liquid and right now their entire draft is kind of concentrated around fighting in this small arena and and just executing anything caught they need something that can play with pace now because right now yeah. the draft is just so slow. It feels like it'll just be the Taiga show desperately trying to make moves around the map. But how do you gank for a warlock and a void? Uh, you, do they need ganks? The thing is, though, they have, there's two options for a team liquid right now. They either go for a hero that can 
prolong the game long enough to get items, like for example, like a Zeus, or you go for something that can be super tempo setting, like a Quop. And then they're the two play styles. You go find fights, or you wait for them to make moves, and you have so much damage at the place that you want to fight that OG can never, you know, outmaneuver you, outpace you, because they just don't have enough damage compared to Liquid yeah. when they want to fight. You could do something like a Lina, just not very much a Koifa hero. I, I like your Zeus idea. I'm just worried he feeds. Because right now... Like, but to what we're, like in terms of the feeding point, he will feed if there's a strong OG. Like if OG pick a, a super gap closing mid, then sure it will. But they don't have any supports that naturally will kill him. Maybe the Rubik, but yeah. it's a hard position. Cool thing about OG though, and why I always loved when they were willing to first two troll, and I feel like other teams aren't, is just because they're also one of the only teams confident at playing at mid. And yeah. it, I'd argue it's exactly as effective as when they play at safe lane, because Thompson's troll is, is one of his best heroes. So they, they don't can... really care where it goes. So if it has a good matchup mid, you put it there. Otherwise, you last pick it to counter whatever they get for Koifa right here right now. It depends on the greed. Like, do they still value like the Storm, for example? Like, it's a very greedy core, especially when you have like the Voids, the uh, Dooms, even Sanking Fall. There's not a lot of like items. To... Okay, they go for a Puck. Okay, that's nice. I don't, I, I don't mind yeah. that, honestly. It's it... with Wave Clear, same principle yeah. as Zeus. It's the team fight as well. It's, very it's scary. the same concept as your mm -hmm. Storm and Quap, but you sacrifice damage for extra control. It's and the because you both. have Warlock, I think you can get away with it. Yeah, it's honestly the best of both between like the two scenarios. Puck is honestly the yep. one hero that actually mirrors both Looks of them. Like, oh, they go for the monkey. That's it. Classic OG. And I've been told this is not Ooh. a good hero right now. Yeah, not really. I've been told Thompson, he's baby. falling off. I think, Come on. I, I, don't hold me to this, but he. I don't think he's won a lot of pubs with this monkey. Uh, in the last couple of weeks. So. so is there any reason why they would pick it as we see the odds still unsurprisingly favoring OG, but is there any possibility that the, they were suspecting that this might be a Doom mid? Because last time they ran the four position, oh, yeah. uh, Sand King for Taiga, they had Boxy on the puck mm -hmm. and That's they were point. trying to kind of cut the, lay, cut the wave a little yeah. bit. Boxy took over mid. Does this lock in a mid puck now? It's, it's a really good point. I think you kind of have to because you can't put Doom against MK mid. That's mm. not going to fare well for him. That'll be a free farm MK. Uh, I love OG's lineup. I think their scaling power is off the charts. The concern is, and to your point, why puck mid makes more sense is because that Ags timing is going to be super important because otherwise you have absolutely nothing to deal with these BKBs. Sure, you could Doom them. Sure, you could Chrono them. But if they don't die, like you're losing this fight 100%. And I think an Ags on puck is going to be the big turning point for Liquid. Uh, in these in these team fights. Yeah, this will be the same game as the first, where if OG, they have a bad lane, I can just see Liquid walking it. But the way that OG plays with this troll monkey, their mm. itemization will unlock the ability to go to Roshan, will be able to flood the map, take objectives, and just non-stop fight. If they ever waste a key spell on Liquid, it just means OG can go like you know 10 times stronger to the next fight. Yeah. So it, it, it's, it's classic OG gameplay, but their last three games, we haven't really seen them play that well. That, that's scary. And I think Liquid mm -hmm. have really proven that they've bounced back and... Yeah, it, you have real big issues dealing with Tombstone. OG only have to think about their RP, and Seb traditionally is going to play more of a support style mag. Mm -hmm. They're just going to play around their Tombstone. Liquid, to win fights, you've got Dalm to think about, you've got uh, your Coil, you have Chrono, Doom. It's a lot of big spells. And if you're ever missing just one, two of them, you don't feel confident taking team fights. And every minute that nothing happens, OG are winning and yep. getting, they're out resourcing because they're going to have empowered course. So I'd lean OG. I think if it's a different team, I'd lean Liquid. Yes. But I've just seen OG play with this style so often that I, I have to have faith in it. I've seen them win TIs with, with these heroes. Either way, it looks like it's going to be a spectacle with all these team fight ultimates. So let's see if Liquid can pull out a second victory as we move forward into game two. That's right, we go from experimenting with Bloodseeker to now classic OG, right? We've yep. got Magnus, we've yep. got a troll. It feels like OG, they're going to show, okay, you know what, Liquid, you may have taken that game one, but that was just because we're messing around. We're trying something new. What yep. about it? Can you be classic OG? I feel like this Liquid lineup has some pretty damn overwhelming team fight. And yeah. I think OG looks like they have a draft that, that wants to fight into it. They don't want to take these small skirmishes. They have Troll Ultimate. That's very committal. They have Tombstone. That's very committal. Mm -hmm. They have Magnus RP. That's very committal. Monkey King Ult. Like, the list goes on and on. And I think this Liquid lineup is just impossible to fight into. With that being said, like Kyle was saying, you do have OG Classics here. So you can definitely snowball out of the lanes if... Troll gets huge enough with the Empower, he can literally just 1v5. The same thing goes for Monkey King, so a lot depends on how these lanes go. 
Yeah, he was also saying that if there is no fighting, then OG, every minute that goes by, they're winning, right? Because they have the efficiency of Empower farming. This is true. Yep, definitely. Uh, there's no ancient farmers or anything else to, to kind of make up for that on the Liquid side. So Liquid definitely needs, uh, needs to take the initiative to uh, fight around the map as much as possible. Trying to body block Seb. Don't let him get that bounty rune. And Mickey does successfully grab it. It's still three in the favor of OG. And Liquid are apparently going to bok, bok, bok off the ill omens. I would be really impressed if they had the new one already. But, you know, mm. there, there hasn't been enough time. I know they've been busy. Apparently, that's not what the team activity they were up to recently. Instead, they all went and saw a movie last night. Oh. Okay. Nice little time off for them to be able to reset. What is... Can we can we get a look at Taiga? What is... What was, he was digging his... He was digging a hole where he could be in experience range, I'm guessing. Yeah. Not really going to make use of it, but... Nice little juke path, though, for running away from the Undying. This, I, I think so. this is so cool, what they're doing with the Puck Sand King. And they did the same thing against another Undying. Uh, it's this idea that, like, you can only deal with one of these heroes. They're very different in the way that they play the lane. So one of them's going to get farmed. At least that's kind of my take on it. Yeah, and also, I, I feel like it was something uh, I wanted to talk about last game was the fact that at some point in time, Boxy rotated up to the safe lane. Right, and they gave Taiga a solid, like it felt like a good four or five minutes of him just being able to sit in a lane and farm. And that's what they did last time with the Sand King as well. It seems like to me they're making more of a division, or, or sorry, less of a division between the three and four positions, where they're letting Taiga pick up more farm than he used to, and Boxy is going to play more active. Yeah, and the, the reason this is cool is because for a lot of other teams, it's like the division will happen because it's forced but they're actually making the choice. They're like, Sand King is starting with the Quelling Blade and he's farming. I mean, Tyga has a Quelling Blade. He's a position four. Yeah. Yeah, no, this seems like a very conscious decision by them. Meanwhile, they're also going to be running the uh, the Doom mid, and it's going to be matched up against the Monkey King. I don't know how that goes. Uh, I have to imagine that's Monkey King favored, but then again, Doom's really strong. Decay, if he hits this last one, never mind. He had a lot of stacks. Stick charges against that Undying. Very effective because you're low strength, so. Does Koif have two of Adar? Yeah, of course he does. That the, even more value than it used to be. It used to be from two to six, now it's one to five, I something think. Like that. So five Xing it is nuts. Yeah. I, I think Doom Mid, you know, your melee hero versus monkey, you're definitely going to suffer. I mean, he's suffering a lot. Thompson is doubling his CS. But you're still doomed. Like, this hero just gets net worth because of Devour, and he can also push the wave with Scorched Earth. He's got the the armor creep, which definitely helps. Oh, yeah, that is going to be really nice for him. I think Interesting it, that he didn't go Scorched Earth. I oh, just yeah. I assumed it was going to be a, a kind of a, like a 4-1 four, four, max out, but... Yeah, that, that, that is really interesting. It, I haven't seen somebody skill this ability early for a long time, especially on mid-doom. It's usually just 4-4... Four, four, Zero. Yeah. Yeah, and it's really cool, right? It's like it's like whenever they can fight around the sandstorm or like farm around the sandstorm, Taiga gets like total free farm, right? And then when those times aren't there, Taiga doesn't have to exert himself and be like, oh, I gotta run over and you know kill that range creep or something. Boxy, Boxy takes the, the harder farm. farm. Exactly. It's 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 very cool. And with this, they can have Taiga on the creep wave like this, and then Boxy trading in the trees. You know, where he can take the Undying, waste his time, take the Troll, waste his time. I'm a, I mean, they're not dumpstering this lane by any means. Troll is doing incredibly well, but I think it's a, I think this is a really interesting concept that they're doing. Like, you, you don't see this at all. And as a whole, OG is doing very, very well in all of their lanes. They've got top three CS, similar to the way Liquid was able to uh, do a nice job in game one with the laning phase. So looking like uh, maybe the shoe is going to be on the other foot here. Taiga. He's got plenty of stick charges, so should be fine. Boxy cut the wave, too. Yeah, this this really looks like Liquid is just in every lane they're kind of struggling to get farm. I mean, this top lane they're doing okay. They're against a mag. This is a free lane always, but if an off lane mag is getting farmed, you have a problem. Like, this hero just gets in power and he can get giga fat in the jungle. Yeah. Even from the off lane. Giga fat. Big boned, I'm sorry. 
Please, Jenkins. Five minute battery runes are coming up. This is about the time where you see the sidelines uh, trying to assert their control over the, the lane somehow. Maybe it's by getting a kill, we're pushing in the map, and we're gonna see Liquid secure the first blood here and chase away Seb as well. So, Insania should be able to get one bounty rune at least off of that play. I was going to say, like, the best thing about getting that kill is not the gold from the kill at all. It's, oh man, if Seb dies here, Oh, he was, oh, he was considering yeah. it. That, I don't think that's a play you want to make against a mag underneath tower, Thompson. You got to be careful with that, yeah. Heals up to full with the boundless strike hit. No! Damn, Mickey, what the he's hell? I mean, he, he's got a big wave to work with, I suppose, so he's yeah. not too afraid. He's got a warlock to heal him up to. Tiger's catching up down here. Once you have the higher levels in the Sandstorm, it's much easier to get farmed. A lot of neutral creeps there. Taiga takes the opportunity to try and farm around. I love that Midwan is willing to come over here and fight against this. He only has the Burrow Strength trying to get out of range of the Whirling Axes. The ranged ones are coming up, but it's a bit too far for Midwan to chase. Doesn't want to lose out on that much CS. Good timing for him to go fight like that, though. It looks like he had pushed the wave first, so that actually gave him the opportunity to run over without being too throwy. I want to keep an eye on camp stack this game. Uh, just because I remember Lacoste pointed out yesterday that was my co-casting partner. Yes, of course. You nice two-man pro strike and a doom out onto the troll. Really good setup, but they still managed to get the kill on Taiga. No tail going for the deny it. And no! I thought for sure he got that, Jenkins, but it looks like he fell just a bit shy and the Doom damage ended up finishing him off. Scorched Earth level one, that's all it takes when you have a haster. He's already max movement speed. He knew, he predicted. <laughs> and with regards to the camp stack that you were talking about, mm -hmm. it's a little different in this game because they don't have a TA to farm them. Like my question would be who farms it? And it's kind of like, Taiga would farm it, but yeah. boxy stacking would give Taiga the lane, so it is a it is a little bit awkward in terms of how they did it yesterday. Yeah, I was just more referring to the fact that that was something that Fly to Moon just did nothing of. They, they just seemed to never stack whatsoever for themselves, where you could see even though Liquid don't have the clearest ways, they've still stacked a, a number of times. There's level 6 for the Void, so we're going to have to watch out for a kill in that top lane soon. Meanwhile, though, bottom lane getting chased away again and again. Time mid one. Not slowing down here. Clips him with the Whirling Axes. Needs another hit. He'll secure it. Is he going to be punished for this very deep position? He gets level 6 off of that kill. Maybe that's part of the reason he makes that dive. Is he going to be able to get it off, though? No. Chronosphere comes out from Mikke, and he will die before he gets that chance. I was... Honestly shocked when mid one dove that 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 felt I, I Didn't think he was gonna get Taiga, but then he does get Taiga But of course there's got to be a response that comes to a dive like that. I mean, that's a level five troll Yeah, it's it's pressure. It's really good pressure as a solo troll I'm impressed that mid one was able to calculate that he was gonna get the kill there, but I, I still don't think it's worth it Yeah, that's why I think part of it was the fact that he's like if I get this kill I get level six you know, and then maybe I'm able to, like, man up and get yeah. a kill on the puck or something. Yeah, and then Mikkei just TPs, and it's like, well, all Whoa, right. Oh, Koifa, is this going to be worth it for you? He grabs the regen room, but now he's going to be caught as mid-one TPs in. Insania, I don't think he's got a whole lot. No, he does have upheaval at level four, so he's going to try and slow down these heroes, and this is going to look pretty good. If the Doom can actually get out, Koifa, he that gets upheaval, away. Man. That upheaval is going to be a big problem for this lineup, too. Troll, I, I don't think is going to be very happy with that at all. Monkey King may not be uh, so good with that either. Yeah, you know what? L like, looking back at this Warlock pick, Upheaval seems really good against OG's three cores. You have three melee cores that just run after people. They do not have Chronosphere. Mickey still TPs in aggressively. Now, he doesn't get locked down by the Troll, but even that Time Walk is not going to be enough to save him, it looks like, as he is getting all the heals in the world. Another Time Walk goes off, and it's just enough, but... They do have the Doom out onto the Monkey King, but Monkey King still fighting strong underneath this tombstone. A pro strike that misses. Eventually, the Monkey King does go down. No Tail, though, dishing out a hefty amount of damage. You can see mid one does manage to finish off Boxy there, while No Tail being chased down by Mickey. He's going to get on top of him, just needs a bash or two, and should be able to get this kill, but he's so damn tanky that it takes a while. Finally, he does die. You become and Jenkins, I'm going to need you on this one. I don't know who won that fight. Oh, man. 
man. <laughs> that was that was crazy. I mean, OG with the dives, that was nuts. Mickey jumping in like that? Yeah, just imagine if what he if, doesn't get off that first time walk. Yeah, what if he gets rooted? Yeah, he just He's dies dead. right away. I mean, this is crazy brawling Dota. I mean, I love it. It's it's interesting, but good lord, I have no idea who won that. I feel like they both lost. <laughs> Just in some way, they both walked away a little unhappy. All right, I'm going to say that OG won that because okay. Seb this whole time, he's just chilling top. He's just been farming. He's been stacking. He's probably going to get his Blink Dagger soon if he doesn't already have it. Or maybe he's going to go for a mechanism. Like, he's, he's got an item if he wants one. Which, I mean, of course, he's going to get an item. But you see what I'm saying. Yeah. He's huge. He didn't show up to anything. The no. carry, mid one showing up to it. Popping the ultimate here to be able to clear through the ancient stack. I kind of like that just because he doesn't want to leave that out there, you know, for Liquid to potentially invade later on or something. Sure. Maybe not that they could take sure. it, but he could get caught doing it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, getting that solo XP too, like, like it's, it's on Sven, like, you know, Sven, Terrorblade, like you pop their ults, pop mm -hmm. meta. You just take the ancient stack because it's it's so valuable to get it alone. It's so much XP. Two man burrow strike into the epicenter here with Boxy getting the coil, so they're not going anywhere. They're gonna stay underneath this assault of magic damage. And while they had hoped to get the tier one tower, and they very likely will, and they don't actually go get the deny. The liquid definitely could have teamed up and gotten it, but yeah, uh, possibly. Instead, the siege dragon snipes it. A couple of kills, and they finally put pressure onto Seb, who is having a really good game as an offlane mag. I love this. OG is pressuring that mid tower, and Liquid realize they're kind of out of position, so they smoke up. They need to get to this mid lane as quick as possible. But they don't have coil. They they're going to lead off the golem, and they are going to be able to get the bro strike follow up. But they have the science. It looks like the trolls just not going to be able to get a chance to get off that ultimate. And they still have the chronosphere too. They're going to be able to catch three, three. with that Koifa. They need to deal with this tombstone. It's getting real bad if they leave it up. They do manage to kill it and backing away from that buyback. They're still trying to find a no tail a little bit. Mickey apparently not that scared, not that timid about fighting into OG and that. Perhaps goes to what you were talking about, Jenkins. It is very difficult to fight into Liquid right now. This early blink taker of Taiga finds another opening. Finishes off No Tail, while well, the rest of the team is going to look to take down this Tier 1 tower. Monkey Gang's hopping in. They're going to try and set up potentially an ultimate here, but the Doom with the Coil Silence on top of these two. Max going to go down before he gets anything off. Now they just need to be able to kite around the troll. The Burrow Strike, hoping to be able to buy some time for the Doom, but he's caught off by Thompson. Socks, meanwhile, he's going to be dealt with Mickey, but this troll keeps on laying the damage out. Finishes off Taiga. Can he get the lockdown on Boxy? Thompson's hunting for him. The urn. Boxy gets a little bit more of a heal. He's got a phase shift, but I don't think he's got the spells to be able to get away in the end. Thompson as the reinforcements is deadly to Liquid. I think the real problem there is it's very similar to the first game where we have Liquid, they take a couple of good fights, they get a couple of kills, but then mm -hmm. they don't have any ultimates left. Like you you have to fight around these ulties. You're fighting a troll, Monkey King. Dude, Mickey is just not scared of being netted. He has got big balls in this game. He yeah. does not care. A lot of the the new faceless void players, like this seems to be the style of Faceless Void. I think Charlie's the first person that I saw that really played like this yeah, with yeah, the Halberd. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But even with this build, people just seem to be playing around the fact that you're so survivable, especially if you go for the strength talents at level 10. Yeah, double, like Treads, Double Wraith Band, Magic Wand, plus a strength talent. That is a lot of accessory strength that is put in there into this very heavy stat build. Yeah, definitely. And armor. He's a, he's a powerful boy. Yeah, 18 armor. Jeez. But with that being said, I do think there's a few of these situations where in another universe he does get punished yeah. for jumping into a troll who doesn't net him in three or four hits. Pretty much a dead even game, net worth wise, 7 to 13 to the favor of Liquid. But an even net worth game I think is concerning for, for Liquid. I mean, it's still very early, but you always got to be thinking to yourself like, okay, if we're not fighting right now, trolls farming. Trolls and power farming, you know, like, what do we do about that? And these fights are going to look a lot different, too, when Seb does pick up the Blink Dagger. He's going for this mechanism build. He's going for the just kind of run at you, be tanky build, which a lot of Magnus players uh, tend to do in the early game because the really the RP is not that effective until the later parts of the game. Yeah, there, there are a lot of uh, problems that OG's current uh, team fight has 
that'll be solved by items, right? They don't really have the best initiation. Blink Tagger for Seb. They don't have an answer to all these silences and control for the, the troll, right? But if he's able to get even an S and Y would help. Obviously, BKB would Greaves, be massive. Greaves on Seb just to give him a little bit of sure. extra HP so he doesn't get bursted because there's the Puck Silence, there's the Chrono. There's there's a lot of times here where we're seeing mid one get bursted and you know building into a mech is definitely going to help with that. Yeah, we're seeing OG fight evenly with Liquid when we don't even get a chance to see a big RP skewer back into Monkey King ult. Yeah, that, right? not, like, that has not happened. That's just a killer combo that isn't available just yet until we have that blink deck. We haven't even seen a Monkey King ult, period. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I think he just he, he just recently skilled it. I mean, it's a very typical thing for Monkey Kings to do, you know, the ults in the early levels. Like, you need, once again, you need items. Like, this OG draft does really well with items. Yeah. It goes to show how important initiation is going to be in this, where we're able to theoretically go down how each team wins a fight. Right, where it's like, okay, you get that RP skewer back, instant win. But at the same time, you get the right Chronosphere and blow up the troll before he gets a chance to cast anything. Then that looks like an instant win. Or the too. mag, on honestly, like it's it's. Oh yeah. The classic, like who gets the jump? Because I feel like there's a lot of really good targets on both sides to jump. Every single hero offers a lot. Maybe barring like the Undying, uh, maybe barring like the Rubik after he casts his spells, or sorry, the Warlock after he casts his spells, something yeah. like that. But in most scenarios, if you can get one of any of these heroes before they cast spells, it's really good. Heaven's Halberd is going to be the first uh, or second item pick up for Koifa after the phase drums that he has. Such a good counter to the troll. He pops ult and you just disarm him. Yeah. He's a, a ranged hero, so you get the, uh, the extra duration on him. They have so many ways to answer that troll, right? Upheaval, a lot of stuns. Coil is one of the best. You've got Doom that can catch him before he gets it off, as does Chronosphere. Two BKB piercing disables that are going to have to worry about it. Looks like Monkey King's going to jump into the back line here. And Sandy is in trouble. And the whole team turns around and instantly deals with the Monkey King while Mickey zones out the rest with this Chronosphere. They're now going to jump in with the Golem as they reinitiate with Taiga hitting the two-man bro strike as the Chronosphere fails. Mid one does manage to get off his ultimate, though. Looks to be able to trap down somebody here. There's also down by the tombstone, but Mid one just seems to be suffering in the damage. He can't quite finish anybody off. Boxy does die to the zombies. And it looks like Koifa may as well. In fact, he does. But it is going to be in the end, Insania and the rest of Liquid winning the fight, two for four. Bro, everybody was slowed to hell in that fight. Like, you had the tombstone uh -huh. with ten zombies on everybody on one side, and then you had the upheaval. That was hilarious, but man, that Chronosphere backline jump? Ooh, Taiga. Taiga's getting such nice initiations here. Like, yeah. his Sand King has been consistently impressive. I think this speaks to your point. That that play single-handedly speaks to your point that you said what Liquid has made in adjustments is they're protecting their backline better. Yeah, right? absolutely. Insania absolutely. got jumped, the whole team swiveled on a dot and just said, that's the guy we're going for. Even using the Chrono to zone while saving the backlines. Yeah. Like, that's, that's not something that you see often with Faceless Void. Usually it's you chrono the entire team and you use it as like a single target tool to kill one guy, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's the new chronosphere. That's the mantra of Faceless Void. So to, to see that just speaks to like how they how they've talked about this. Maybe that's what the pauses were about, but I don't know. Maybe it was mic issues, maybe. But they've they've clearly they've clearly talked this through. Like guys, we just need to stick together in these fights and we're gonna win. Because I feel like in both games, they picked a really strong team fight as long as they're together, as long as they're pressing their stuff with each other's spells. Now it's kinda weird, is that OG normally I'd say Chronosphere's down, Doom's down, Golem's down, go fight. But they also have this empower farming mechanism, you know? So it seems like more like those downtimes are better for OG just to be like, okay, we can just farm up a bunch. In fact, now they're I gonna mean, force Roshan. I, I was gonna say, cool. dude, you're kind of right. I mean, th this is this is how you fight. If you don't have some way to initiate, you just say, okay, come at us. We're yeah. gonna Rosh. You have to fight us right now or we're taking Rosh. Now Liquid still has two very important tools here and that's gonna be one, Taiga with a jump in bro strike on a two, but he gets caught instantly. The dust goes out and Telekinesis, Wukong's command to be able to zone everybody out. They're gonna deal with the tombstone on the side of Liquid while Taiga buys back. They look to protect this Roshan. The other tool is Boxy. He still has his coil up, so it's dangerous for OG to stick around here. That upheaval too, man. That is yeah. completely devastating for Topson in mid one. In all of these fights, they've looked so uncomfortable getting slowed Smoke up, down. Seb. If he gets the right kind of initiation here, it would be really big. Spot Seb. 
He's blinked dagger tonight, but at the same time, the initiation going out of the Koifa. Telekinesis into the Boundless Strike Stun, but here comes the Burrow Strike on two with the Epicenter. They throw out the Chronosphere, and they catch three with that. Meanwhile, the Monkey King, who had already been doomed, doesn't stand a chance. Once again, Seb, and his initiation is completely denied. We have not seen an RP from this man, nor will we in this fight as five get wiped from the face of the Earth. Just such impressive team fighting, honestly. The, the Chronosphere follow-up to the Taiga initiations, like constantly getting three or four heroes. Yeah. And then you have the Fatal Bonds. You have the Puck Coil as well. The Doom is always happening on Topson, so he can't do anything when it comes to backline jumping. He even got rocked. Like they're just kiting Topson while killing everybody else. Or vice versa. A prize. Yeah, very nice. And they get all four bounties as well. And Roche. Mm -hmm. the, the gold lead just went up by like 5k. Yeah. <laughs> it's a massive swing that all came down to one team fight. And, and I think all starts with Taiga having the willingness to just go in and slow down Roshan with his first life. He's like, guys, I have buyback. We've got cooldowns that are coming up soon. We just need to stall them out. And right? you know, that's the interesting thing about this having a puck that's really farmed as well as having Taiga that's like equally farmed is that if one of them dies, you still have the other that has spells and that has items for, for team fighting. Like, mm -hmm. they're functioning as kind of the same role. And basically, you can just throw in whatever hero has the buyback. Like, that was 100% communicated. I guarantee you, he said, I have buyback, I'm going in. Yep. I'm going to buy back. We're going to fight this. Yep. That's why he did an epicenter. Because he knew that he was going to die, buy back, and then use the epicenter on his buyback. Just, man, clutch team fighting coming out of Liquid. 100%. Like, that, this, is, this is what you expect... This is what everybody expected them to look like at the start of this tournament. Now, OG, they may be down 7,000 net worth, but they're certainly not out. They still had this incredibly big late game threat, and we still have yet to see that big RP and what combo follows off of it. Can they get the damage onto Thompson? They tried to cut down the trees, but he's hopping away. They caught him with the coil. He's stuck now, and he's going to be knocked down to Earth, and soon he will rest below the Earth for 50 seconds. Once again, I I'm going to put that one on Topson. I, I think that's, uh, you know, <laughs> they they've got a lot of Bok Boks. I got to say, they g I'll consistently get this to the very high pitched one. Mm -hmm. It's starting to sound like slacks in here, but <laughs> they <laughs> Honestly, I, you know what's funny about that is I could I, I know slacks is sitting in the, there in the green room right now. And if he heard that, he's just like, Whoa, what? <laughs> why, why me? <laughs> yeah, he's, he's not going to be too happy with that one. <laughs> But man, Thompson, he keeps both of these games. He's playing overly aggressive, but th this is, that's what he does. Yeah, he is a zealous player. I also have about the highest pitch voice, so I'm just trying to like distract from that by mm. kind of throwing yeah. slacks under the bus. I thought about throwing shade on you for that one, but it's OK. I'll, I'll do it myself. Okay, he's got the blink on Seb. I was going to say, I don't know if you finished the Guardian Greaves. I feel like we need to see an RP. Yeah, absolutely. We need to see an RP, we also need to see a, monk, uh, a BKB on the troll. I think those are two items that cannot be ignored any longer. Yeah, the upheaval's been way too much of a problem. Yeah. But they, Puck, he's gonna, have, he's gonna have the eggs coil soon. He doesn't mm -hmm. already have it. Soxa breaks the smoke here. Burrow Strike trying to get away, does not have Blink Dagger up, but he is hidden inside the trees. And Liquid, uh, Interesting that they chose to quickly disengage there. They didn't really try and blindly chase. I think the the way they've taken the fights in the past, they've had a lot of information to work with. Like they they haven't gone in blind for any of these fights. Mm -hmm. uh, they they've had like Taiga go in blind, but then he sets up for his team to go in with information. So I think not blindly chasing is definitely like sticking with the mantra that they're currently using to win these fights. There's the uh, Heaven's Halberd build for the Faceless Void. Still going for it in, yep. uh, in this patch. I mean, it's it's only 400 extra gold. I don't feel like that's that big of a nerf. Yeah, and when it's so good, carry against carry, Golem and Upheaval gonna be used here to try and bail out Koifa, who gets caught by a smoke here. The Skewer's gonna be able to stop that Upheaval, but now it's Mickey time. He gets a three-man Chronosphere. Here comes Thompson, though. He does manage to get out the Wukong's command. Most of his team is dead, but one very important member is still alive, and it's mid one. He is laying the damage in, not able to finish off Mickey, but they're fighting around this um, Wukong's man pretty nicely trying to disengage and get out but he's caught in the silence he falls and now a doom on to tops and they'll leave him for last just as they've done so many times before 
A second Heaven's Halberd picked up as well for Taiga. Just the cherry on top for team fights to come. Man, mid one's life is going to be so difficult. So difficult. And it, there's enough net worth on Liquid that they can honestly just power through the Monkey King ult. Like, we, we need to see an RP. There hasn't been a single RP from Seb. He almost got it off in that fight. But there's a lot that he's playing into now. He's got a super farmed Faceless Void with Chronosphere. There's a potential Doom. There's Warlock upheaval. So it's hard to get into position. You're getting your blink canceled by Fatal Bonds. It's a hard game for him, but I, I almost feel at this point, just use it on one or two people just to get it off. Burrow Strike Initiation onto the Undying, gonna try and prevent him from getting off. They do manage to use an RP, and it catches Taiga, who's an important target because he did buy back earlier. The Heavens Halberd, though, going to work. A four stack trying to get him away, and a coil to disengage. So even though they RP'd, brought him down the cliff into the tier two, they had, again, that net worth advantage to just power through. That, that always feels bad when you're playing a Magnus, an Enigma, some hero like this, where the later and later the game goes and the more of a gold lead there is against you, it's like, in early game, you could have RP'd one person and it probably would have worked. It's hard to make that calculation, but in retrospect, that's probably what should have been done because he hasn't been able to get it off otherwise. Uh huh. But with that being said, as the game goes later and later, it's like, okay, now I need to hit two people. Now I need to hit three people if we want to win a fight. Now I need to hit four people. And then at a, at a certain point, you need a second RP. Yeah. Like, you need a refresher orb. And it's, it's, it's getting to that point where Seb hitting a huge RP is almost not even enough. I feel like he's got a five-minute window where he's got to do something sick with this spell. So I feel like Seb, he's just going to get torn to hell right now on social media. Oh, God, Thompson. That's another person who's going to get torn to hell. Uh, people slowing him down, and they had the Sandstorm damage to prevent him from jumping into the trees. What I wanted to talk about... I feel like it's easy to dress tops in. That's just tops in. Why did Seb not go for a faster blink dagger? What is the reasoning behind this guardian green? Okay, we may not see it. We may not have a chance to talk about this because look at this. The rainbow TP down to bottom lane. The initiation leading off from Boxy to catch one hero. That's the troll, the heavens halberd, and he just doesn't have a chance in hell to do anything. If he doesn't have BKB, nope. he's screwed. Yeah, Puck is... Very good against this troll hero, man. The, the coil break on the ulti, the silence to prevent the ulti. You can just always use phase shift, even if you're rooted now, which is mm -hmm. a really nice change. You know, you don't see Puck too often, but this is quite a good Puck game. Also, a hero that doesn't really get, doesn't really go into fights. You're not going to get RP. Like, once again, it's really hard, really hard for Seb this game. There's a lot that he's playing into. Yeah. So why did he go for the Greaves? Yeah. I feel like it's just a it's a timing thing. It's like a preference. Okay, never mind. No tail. <laughs> Liquid, man. They're just sweeping back and forth because at some point you know how far ahead you are. Even if you don't get a net worth tag as, as a player, you could just kind of feel it and you just say, they can't fight us and you just keep running at heroes over and yeah, over again. Yeah, yeah. Even with your faceless void just whacking away at the bot tower, you just, <laughs> just two-man dive, whatever. Yeah. Boxy's build, too. He's not even going for the Aghanim Scepter because... Troll hasn't had a BKB. Oh, okay, he's got the BKB. Just kidding. Did he, ju he just finish that, right? Am I crazy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't have it when he died at bottom. Okay, so now I think the Aghanim Scepter on Puck is definitely a solid option. Yeah. He's going for travels. This is a very interesting build. Yeah, it really is. I, I thought Aghanim Scepter was like a guarantee at some point. I mean, I suppose you have so much BKB piercing disable and just disable in general. That he doesn't need it. I mean, I'm not questioning Boxy. This guy, this guy's the the puck player. Like he's the only player that's playing offlane puck right now. I, I can't think of another person that plays it. So if this, if this is the build that he's he's got a faceless void, so buffing up in the chrono is always really nice with that uh, solar crest. Yeah. As well as it, it helps him take Roche, which is actually somewhere where their lineup struggles. It's basically just void that takes Roche. They're great at team fighting, but their Roching is kind of terrible. Is the smoke gonna break? Liquid. They get into this high ground. OG, oh, they just smoke themselves and they're going to leave this high ground area. Ooh, if they could catch Boxy. Smoke breaks on Boxy. They lead off with a boundless strike, but they don't. Ooh! Jump in from Taiga, but he doesn't get the boundless strike in time and he actually hits the BKB of Thompson. Now Taiga's in some serious trouble as mid one starts going to work on these heroes. An RP on it too. With the extra cleave damage, can they do anything here? Mickey so damn tanky. Look at that Solar Crest. Look at the Heavens Albert. He does nothing to him. He got full time to swing, and OG said, that's it. If you can't bring down 
a single hero, when you've been swinging on him, you get an RP, you have Empower, you're never going to get a better opportunity. It, we just can't do